Nick and I are off for a couple of days, Forrester Dean. And we're going to camp along the River Wye somewhere. We've literally just got out of the car and straight into the forest. And it's fantastic. Feels very much like spring already, doesn't it? down to the river now we've just found some wild garlic we're gonna taste a little bit it's just coming through it's all the way along the back here as well that's nice and spicy too delicious and it's gonna have a little try at the uh, bulb of the wild garlic and see how it is I suspect it's gonna be even hotter than the leaves there you go let's, buddy let's give it a try brush her off be interesting. I suspect they'll be hotter than the leaves, but have a little nibble. It smells good. Yeah. What's it like? Is it as hot as the leaves? Milder? No, mi milder, yeah. Give me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Give it a try. So it's still recording. Get some middle. It looks like garlic at the bottom as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's nowhere near the strength of garlic, though. I'll just peel the outer skin off so I haven't got any mud on it. Oh, that's good. Cool. Kick to it. Get that off. found our camping spot for the evening it's just right up a big hill and I'm absolutely exhausted need to exercise more let's go for a wonder and have a tour so we've got to the top of the hill and Nick's found something I think someone's been here before by the looks of it and it might be one of you Let's have a look what we've found. That is unbelievable, isn't it? Literally, bushcrafters think alike, don't they? God knows how old this must be. From all the miles and miles of woodland we could find, we found the perfect camp spot. That is unreal, isn't it? That is amazing. Just goes to show you when you're hiking around, people have the similar sort of thoughts, don't they? Thought processes of, we'll go up the hill, camp out the way, and no one will ever know. We've found an absolute perfect ideal spot. Right near the river as well. That is, I mean, that's, we couldn't ask for more, could we? Now, I bet some people watching this will know where it is as well, just by the fireplace. If you've been here before, thanks for the hard work. I'm going to rehydrate. Pretty set up for the top because we're due a bit of rain, aren't we? Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, it's alright there. That's twangy. We could do do That's with the tie off. We could do with the tie off there as well. Here. Yeah, and and that one there. That I'll, one. I'll check and see that what paracord I've got. Yeah, because you'll get there as well, won't you? These keep coming loose. I'll see what more paracord I've got if so I can cut some off. Moment of truth. Get in and see if it all snaps. I always do this a bit tentatively. Let's take some pressure. Let's check to see if the tree's flexing much. And they look sturdy. Oh. 
I am tempted to have an afternoon nap, believe me. We've probably got another about half an hour or an hour's sunlight before it goes down behind the ridge over there. Oh, that is good. Oh, nice. You can quickly drop off. If you're out there and you're used to ten, ten, uh, tenting and hammock might be tempting you and you're thinking about getting one, get one. Mainly, I like them because they're more hygienic. You know, they've got bug nets and you're less likely to get ticks and things like that on you. And the comfort is so much nicer than sleeping on the floor. Last year I had a few days sleeping on the floor then went into the hammock and I could not get in it quick enough. It was so comfortable. And because it's a downfield and the blanket keeps me extra warm. There we go. And that's pretty much it. Then I'll get the tarp over the top. And find a nice hammer stone. That's the sleeping system all set up. Happy with that. It's getting almost time for dinner. It's a fantastic show to whoever made it. Last night was an interesting night. Just as we were about to go to sleep, you know, brushed our teeth, campfire was dying down and dying off, and we were ready to crawl into the hammocks and get a good night's sleep. We spotted a massive light just over the back of the hill there, and it was huge, and it was shining right through and illuminating lots and lots of the trees, and it's absolutely massive. It looked like a football stadium light. It was absolutely huge. A bit weird and a bit scary as well. We had no idea what it was. So we went up there and had a look and we had to use the binoculars and it turned out to be the moon. And the moon was shining incredibly brightly through here and all down the valley and down along the river as well. It's a fantastic sight. That's what makes it worthwhile being out. Today's a bit different. Cloudy, a little bit of rain as well. Wind's picked up a bit. And let's die in some dim town My brown eyes wait to weigh us down Candles round the tub will drown in our afternoon. Music from our evening parlor, darker than the autumn hour, gave my child twenty dollars for tearing at our moon. In the forest of Dean, found a, a board jaw. It's a pretty
pretty sizable. Yeah, look how thick and solid it is though. I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of that. Huge, huge teeth along there. Imagine being bitten by them. Ouch. Big and solid jaw as well. Hold on, Nick. You can see the teeth growing through here. Yeah. Back teeth, wisdom teeth. Oh, done. Cool, fine. Nice. Can't see you very well in there, do you? You're well hidden and sheltered in this. Lovely. Yeah. You can go further. You can go the full length, though, you couldn't you? You can go the full length. Yeah. Be if it was pissing down, you wouldn't get wet. Yeah. And it's the bone dry in here. The ground's very dry. Nice little small cave in there, isn't it? Yeah. We were planning for a big project day today, but we went for an epic walk and absolutely exhausted ourselves. So we're going to chill out with the fire now and have a little go with the bow drill probably. Well, as predicted, the weather's pretty awful now and it's absolutely hammering it down with rain. But you've got to take the rough with the smooth when you come out. Yesterday was absolutely amazing, beautiful, sunny, warm. And now it's still warm, but it's just hammering it down. And lucky enough, we've got the tarp over the top of us. There's not a huge amount we can do because it's hammering so much. Bring some of this in. But we've had a fantastic time and we're really enjoying it. And if you're a bushcrafter, I strongly recommend you coming over to the Forest of Dean and having a look about and explore. That's got it, isn't it? Surely. Yeah. Got the tinder bundle out, but well, that's coalescing. Just get it wrapped around it, mate. That's it. Take your time. Yeah, don't do it too tight, that's it.
Whee! Oh, well done. Excellent. Well done, Nick. There we go. Get some sticks on that in a bit. Well done. That's nice, that'll do it. Here we go. What's the bannock recipe, Nick? It's uh, flour, yeah. milk powder, nice. baking powder, yeah. and a pinch of salt. What? Well, garlic. I'm going to shred it up then. Yep. Should we just tear it? Yeah, yeah, just tear it. So what point does the cheese go on and what towards the end? I think we could put it straight on and it'll just melt and yeah. then yeah, I think it'll be fine. Just melt over the top and then when we toast the top and when we turn it on its side, it'll just toast that cheese nicely. Mm. I think that looks alright mate, don't you? Looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah my mouth is watering. Let's get it on that fire. Need to make some uh, coals first I think. Oh. It's going straight on the coals then, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. I'll just keep an eye on it. Try and do it slowly. The cheese is going on. That looks amazing. It's toasted on the top as well. Right, I'm getting my plate. <laughs> yeah. Let me know. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> oh, I'm turning this off and cracking on then. <laughs> That one up as well, but I've changed my mind. The, um tidied up and pack away. It's been a good time here, really enjoyed it and hopefully we can visit it a bit more. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching the video as well. What we're gonna go what we're gonna do is get tidied up and have a bit walk bit of a walk around the forest a bit more to explore. Looking forward to getting back later on today and having a nice shower and a bath as well and a good clean up. And of course out comes the kit and gets dried off. 
washed up and ready for the next adventure, wherever that may be. So I've been off to collect some water from the stream and all these are dry bags and I've just turned them inside out, put a load of water in there and I'm going to put the fire out make sure it's completely out. And it was really nice, uh, it was really nice just walking up here because I had, a, had an interesting surprise. As I was walking up, I was walking through a little pine stand and I caught out the corner of my eye just some movement and I turned over and had a look and it looked like little bits of ripped plastic bag just fl flickering in the wind. So then I looked and I was thought, well, I don't remember there being any ripped up plastic bags there. So I stared and I stared and eventually I kind of made out there was deer there. Amazing. It wasn't just one or two deer, there was about 15 deer. And I had a bit of a closer look. I think it was fallow deer with their winter coats on. And very fine coats they wear too. Absolutely beautiful. And I just sat there and thought, oh, I'll watch them for a little bit. And their ears were flickering, batting away flies and just kind of being quite casual about it. Looking over, they'd noticed me. I wasn't moving, I was keeping still. And then a fly kind of came and buzzed around my ear. And as soon as I moved just a little way to brush it away, their ears suddenly stopped like that. And all their heads perked up like this. And they spotted me. And I thought, I wonder how long they'll stay for now or whether it'll be okay or whether they'll move off quickly. So a moment passed and then one of them just started to move off to the side, just walking a little bit and the whole herd followed. It was a brilliant experience and that's what makes it worthwhile coming out to the woods, seeing about 15, 15 plus deer in a herd. Right, let's get the fire out. So I've got plenty of water, there's probably the uh, best part of 20 litres in there I'd say. And it's still smouldering away. We're going to use one of the pegs that I was using to uh, prop up my top and we'll make some holes in the ground as deep as we can so that when we pour the water in it'll get right down because this fire has been burning for hours and hours and you must if you're going to have a fire in the woods you must put it out properly even if that means going to source a lot of water along a long hike I'm quite tired and quite worn out from the hike but it's got to be done. We can't, we can't leave it to smoulder and hope that it'll go out on its own. That's not fair on the woodland. And it doesn't do much for the bushcraft community if we leave a mess like that. You can see how hot it is. We need to absolutely drench it. Make some more holes in it. Oh, drop the microphone there. Put them in my pocket. Put a few more holes in. I can get deeper now. And the ground's sticking a bit together so we can open up some nice holes. And you can see that with hours and hours of repeated burning, the soil gets really, really soft and deep and all that heat goes right down in there to smoulder away and cause a fire somewhere else. So we've got loads and loads of deep holes. Let's get some water in them as well. And it'll be doing well if that manages to catch fire. A bit of water on the stones as well, cool them down. There's no way that's going to catch fire. That's one. So that's about 10 litres. Do exactly the same again, make a few more holes. And it's getting really slushy. big bit down. You notice how I haven't got really big bits of logs on there, otherwise they could still smoulder. I mean that's, that's absolutely saturated, that's not going anywhere. And 
and that's got the fire safely out. So a bit more tidy up and then we'll do the leave no trace. The fire's out completely now and what we've done is returned the leaves back over as we found it, put the posts back and because this is someone's campsite and we've used it, you know, and someone's spent a lot of time and effort here, we've left some extra firewood for them up here and some more firewood up there and it doesn't take long to do this, you know, it's just a bit courteous if you're out in the woodland and you've found a camp and you're going to use it for the weekend, just return the favour and enjoy it. And I'm a really big fan of Leave No Trace because it's good for the woodland and it's good as for bushcraft too. You act as a steward for the woodland.